Hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is John Hammond, and welcome back to another Python programming tutorial. We're still looking at the URL lib module, and next we're going to be looking at the underscore URL opener function, and actually some fancy URL opener objects and URL opener objects. So, the two functions that we've been looking at recently, actually the URL open and the URL retrieve function, these create an instance of an object called the fancy URL opener class. And they use that as kind of the back end to do their thing, to perform their requested actions. So as programmers, we can kind of get underneath this. We can subclass these and make them do what we want them to do or have them act how we want them to act. Because they actually allow us to get into two interesting things. For one thing, they allow us to change the user agent header, like the web browser, or make it, make it seem like we're using a different web browser than Python or whatever it is that we're doing. Or they actually let us change the how we authenticate between a uh, user credential, like authenticated web page. So we'll get into that real real soon. Let's actually take a look at how we can work at these, work with these, with the URL opener classes. So I'm going to skip over the utility functions for now, and we'll just get down there to read about these guys. So okay, the URL opener objects. These are the base classes for opening and reading URLs. So by default they send a user agent of URL lib vvv, where vvv is the URL lib version number. So we can supply our own user agent by actually subclassing these guys. URL opener or fancy URL opener. We can supply a different version variable or attributes to whatever we really want it to be. We can, of course, supply proxies in a context. Uh, you can read about these guys here. We'll get into proxies pretty soon. And actually, context, I won't get into. But again, it's just an SSL. And it, it has that same optional parameter for uh, URL open. But I probably won't get into it. But I want you to know that it's there. OK, so now that we're here, let's check this out one more time. We'll take a look at these uh, functions. OK, open. Open unknown, that's, I guess, just for general stuff. Retrieve, that's the same thing as URL open and URL retrieve. And version, okay, that's what we had before. That's what we were just reading about. What's the difference between URL opener and fancy URL opener? Okay, fancy URL opener subclass is URL opener as well. And none of this stuff looks too interesting yet. Oh, okay, basic authentication. What does it say here? For 401 response codes where there's authentication required, basic HTTP authentication is performed. Okay. What do we do? Okay. The instance will call its prompt user password, passwd function, that method, and by default, it asks the user required information on the controlling terminal. Okay, so we had to be on a controlling terminal in that case. Okay, but we can override this with a subclass, and we just have to... Uh, use this function here. Not bad. The return value should be a tuple, user and password, which can be used for basic authentication. Alright, so doesn't look like there's anything else here. Let's go ahead and play with these. Let's try this stuff out. Import URL lib. URL lib. Uh, what was it? We can use... Let's try something that actually uses basic, basic authentication, just to see how it works here. Um, let's use URL open. And I'm just going to use, for example, uh, one of the NATUS or NATA stuff from over the wire. Over the wire dot org. We try this. Okay. Enter username for authentication required there. Okay, so I guess using idle as our controlling terminal. Oh, it gives us this error because well, because we're in idle, we can't control the output. We can't just control whether or not we're actually echoing stuff or not. So in this case the password would be visible, which is totally insecure. If we were to run this via a terminal I'll actually run Python. I'll import. I gotta make this bigger for uh, for you guys, don't I? We giant massive terminal, <laughs> super huge. Okay, import URL lib. URL lib dot. I need to specify that this is HTTP. Oh yeah. Now nah, I'm all screwed up because I. There we go. The 
page is so long. Not as zero, and not as zero. Okay, so when I run it now for the password, because I'm in a terminal, they're able to control the echo, and I can I can type just about anything, and it won't be displayed. So, okay, that's all I really wanted to show you. Nothing crazy. What else is there? I wanted to look at the user agent. So, okay, I'm gonna use this as an example. Httpin.org. Httpbin.org. Um, if we actually go to user agent, it'll return our current user agent. And right now, since I'm using my web browser, it's displaying, oh, okay, this is Mozilla Firefox on Ubuntu Linux. Okay, that's not bad. So if we try to actually access this page from within Python, what would it tell us? We could use URL lib, URL open, this guy, and we'll just read it. And the user agent is Python URL lib with our specific version number. That's weird, right? I don't want the internet to think that I'm browsing if I'm ever scraping or doing some automation stuff with URL lib. I want them to think I'm a regular web browser, right? I don't want them to think that I'm a robot because I'm not a robot. You're not a robot, are you? So let's work with this. It said that we could subclass our fancy URL opener to work with this stuff. So let's do it. Let's define a class called... Um, my opener or something simple like that and we actually need it to subclass URL libs fancy URL opener and let's define let's see let's set up that version variable as our user agent to actually be what we would see as our Mozilla Firefox user, user agent and we can also define, oh, oh, I see. That class actually needs to be with a lowercase, oh, fancy URL opener, lowercase there. And we can define that variable or that, that function, prompt user password, to make it do whatever we want it to. We can have it define, oh, hang on. What the heck? Come on, stop doing that, idle. Prompt user password. It takes two arguments, right? Like it's in the documentation host and realm. It doesn't have to have those that name. I'm actually probably not even going to use these guys, but we'll have it do what is your username? And that can be username and password. I'll just use raw input here. Normally you use get pass or actually a better alternative for this is just have it fire up like a GTK session. What is your uh, password? You could create a GUI for this kind of thing. You can, since you can override this, you can have it do really whatever you want it to. And that's kind of cool. Okay, so now we've created this my opener class and the way we can integrate this into URL lib is URL lib with that underscore URL opener. Is that uh, how it was spelled? Yeah, URL opener, and you just specify your own class object, my opener, and now that's entirely set up. So what if I were to run URL lib dot URL open HTTP, HTTP bin.org slash user agent. Please tell me I am Mozilla Firefox. Heck yeah. And if I wanted to actually go to Natus with over the wire, Natus zero dot Natus. Oh, need to supply HTTP again. Labs dot over the wire dot org. Oh, prompt, prompt user password takes two arguments and three your gift. Okay, so we got to fix that. We actually supplied one extra, I think, because host would be our user. Oh, no, we actually need an object, of course. We need the self keyword because we're in an object. Duh. Okay, so now we have to reset it in our URL opener. That's not too bad. And then we'll just run this one more time. And what's your username? Sweet. Not a zero in this case, and not a zero in that case. But it doesn't have to do that. We can override it to do anything we want it to do. We could have completely different functionality. 
that's kind of cool, right? URL lib's kind of small, kind of strange, probably not as functional as URL lib 2 or URL lib 3 or even requests, but we can do some nifty stuff with it. So now that we just kind of overrode the user agent and actually how we handle authentication with 401, 401 uh, responses, we've got some more stuff to think about. Cool. Well, thank you guys for watching. I know this one was a little bit hectic, but hey, that's all right. I hope you guys enjoyed it anyway, and uh, I'll see you in the next tutorial.